Today on the Metal Roofing Channel, we're showing you how to install a pre-manufactured curb around a square penetration on our model roof assembly. What's up guys, welcome to the Metal Roofing Channel. I'm Thad Barnett from Sheffield Metals. Today's video is sponsored by RPI Curbs. Check them out at rpicurbs.com. Thanks so much to them for donating our pre-manufactured curb that we're gonna be installing today. They have two locations, east and west, servicing international clients as well. So today I have Dave and Jason from the Sheffield Metals Technical Department. They're gonna be demonstrating how to install the curb that we have on our model roof assembly. Well Thad, really, they're, they're really easy to install. Um, they come in one piece or two piece, but it really relinquishes the problem of infiltration of water at the top side of, of the penetration. Everything's welded, tested, and, and water can't penetrate that, that curb assembly. So. Hey, we're back at the training deck, our, our mock-up, and we've installed the panels basically below the curb. You want to lay out your ribs so that you have proper flow around the cricketed or the upper side of the curb, so water comes down and around. So when you lay out your ribs, you don't want it too close to the sidewall of the curb so that water can escape on the backside or the upside of the curb. Here you can see the 12 inch panel lap and the four inch notch in the rib. Make sure to put sealant in the seam of the next panel installed. So this represents the curb and our rib layout uh, with, the pen excuse me, with the penetration, the square penetration. So we've lined that up, we've measured it out, we've notched the bottom flange to account for the rib, which will give us the overlap to the penetration uh, panel overlap. So now we'll pull this part, we'll put butyl tape underneath this, and then we'll work on the sides. Keep in mind for this assembly that this is the architectural curb. Generally, there's a structural curb already set in place. Structural curbs can be made of steel or wood. The steel structural curbs need to be separated from the aluminum curbs provided by RPI due to galvanic reaction and dissimilar metals. Once the curb is notched and in place, install the offset cleat around the perimeter, maintaining a minimum four inch space for water runoff. Uh, we typically recommend starting uh, the side, your vertical offset cleat uh, from the top, uh, working down so you have proper water lap. Uh, side first and now Dave's working on the bottom miter. Um, that it looks like from this position, it'll look like a reverse water lap when you put that piece down. But in all honesty, we're worried about, we're worried about the offset cleat to uh, laying on top of the curb flange. And that's where you have proper water lap. This water, if it gets in here, it's gonna run out past this. The migration of water in, the, in this curtain, certain situation is not the water should not ever migrate up. And we have butyl underneath our flange of our curb. And then we have butyl, everything is set in butyl. And this will be screwed off every four inches. The offset cleat is fastened every four inches because butyl gets compressed two inches on either side of every fastener. The micro sealed welds are tested and factory welded to add to the watertight integrity. Okay, so Dave's uh, installed the offset cleat and I've taken the measurements off of the, off of the offset cleat. Now I'm gonna mark out the panel uh, for the hems. So I always recommend doing it on the back side of the panel. A lot of people do it on the front. It's a little tricky because it's reversed, but you get a cleaner surface to work, up, work with. Uh, so this is my, this is the right side panel. So you go over here. So I've marked where the edge of the panel is going to rest, the visible portion, and where the one inch that will fold over to create our open hem and hook onto the offset cleat. Okay, so on this next one, I know I need to come in six and a half inches. So I'm going to mark six and a half. And I'm also going to add another inch for my open hem. 
Now I need to come up the panel. This is already pre-hemmed. That makes it a little more challenging, but uh, normally I would add this hem on later. We're okay though. So I'm gonna come up 27 and 5 eighths. And I'm gonna come down one for my open hem. Is what I've always liked to do is just take my square and put it at the, the dimension of six and a half. I measure my, I double check my measurement, I'm good there. Just run it down. Now I'll add an inch to that, seven and a half. Gives me my other mark. Double check that, we're good. Run it down. Now I know that this is my bad, this is the area that's, that's my drop. Everything else stays. We'll put a 45 degree here for our hem. When we fold this back, we don't, we wanna make sure we're actually coming back to our zero point. All right, so just a quick tip for going up the sidewall or the side of um, our curb on the offset cleat. What I do is I close these basically all the way down. I take a, I take two two by fours, whatever the height is of the panel, two two by fours and smash this down pretty much all the way. And then take a screwdriver and open that up and that'll open up almost exactly a quarter of an inch just by using the screwdriver and that'll hold everything tight on that jog cleat. So many times we see uh, a deflection of over a half an inch from the edge of the panel to the base of the flange uh, of the curb. So if you use this method, flatten it out, run a screwdriver right down that, it'll open it up almost exactly a quarter of an inch and you'll end up with a better result every time. All right, so we've come to basically the conclusion of our video and the last portion of it. And it's about the end cap, the end cap of the panel end uh, right at the bottom of the curb where the panel seam ends. Uh, we've had a pre-manufactured fully welded cap and we've basically hatched uh, some butyl on the backside so we can fasten it. And I wanna fill up any gaps that we're gonna have in the end cap. I hit the back, the back corners, up the sides, and I put a lot of sealant in this, a lot. And I'm weaving my way back and forth, filling every crevice, trying to make it so that the seam seats, wherever it is in here, it seats and it's sealed up. It's our last ditch effort to seal the top side of that seam. About 80% sealed up and then we're gonna install it. The end cap we're using here is abnormally large, but they will be manufactured to the seam height of the profile you're using. So to screw the end cap down or to fasten the end cap, we're using a number 10 weather head, standard operation as far as any exposed fastener. You can find RPI's curb order form on the Sheffield Metals tech stick or at rpicurbs.com. So we hope this video helped you understand how to install a pre-manufactured curb. Jason, Dave, got any final thoughts for us? You know, anytime you're installing something that needs to be pre-manufactured or manufactured, um, make sure to order it early. Um, that's always helpful to prevent, you know, any sort of delays or anything like that. We'd like to thank RPI. Uh, for supplying the curb for us today. Uh, that's rpicurbs.com is their website and get their information online. Yep, check that out in the description below. Comment as well if you have any questions. Subscribe here to the Metal Roofing Channel. We'll catch you next time.